So today I want to share with you the five stages of rolling, at least as far as I see them. Now remember, I'm a white belt, so I'm brand new, and most of what I do is defensive. Even when I go on the offensive, 99% of the time, I end up being defensive. And that's what happened to me last week in my private lesson with my instructor, Professor Greg. I was trying to shut down some of his offense, and then I got this, this epiphany. So let me share with you what it is right now. Stage one. Stage one when it comes to rolling in jujitsu. Maybe you're brand new, fresh off the street. Maybe you've never rolled before in your life. Maybe it's your first day, your freaking trial class. You are at stage one. And stage one, in my opinion, the way I see it is, I have no idea what you're going for. That's my defensive stage one. Stage one is you're rolling and you have no idea what the other guy is doing, but somehow through magic and I don't know, origami, you end up in some kind of a hold, some kind of a grip, some kind of a choke, and next you know, you're tapping. You're drum rolling, you're tapping so much. And so that would be, in my opinion, stage one of rolling. When you're learning to do jiu-jitsu, learning to roll, learning to be a good jiu-jitsu practitioner, fighter, whatever, the first thing is, I have no idea what the heck is going on. We've all been there. Maybe you're still there, but that is stage one. Stage two. Stage two is, I recognize what you're doing. I recognize what you're going for, but I have no idea how to stop it. Yes, indeed. I recognize what you want to do and what you're trying to do. Oh, this guy's trying to put me in a Kimura. Oh, this guy's trying to go for an arm bar. Or this guy's going for a cross collar choke. Whatever it is, I can recognize what it is you're trying to do, but I have no idea how to stop it. I say, ooh, that happened to me before. Maybe you got choked out with that last week or yesterday's class and you recognize what's coming, but you have no idea how to stop it. That to me is the second stage of defensive white belt rolling or jujitsu rolling in general because we all should start defensively. So stage three, stage three. Stage three is a little bit different. You see in stage three, I recognize what you're going for and I know how to stop it. So I recognize the cross collar choke, I recognize the arm bar, and I know the escape, I know how to stop it. But my defense is lacking. My defense is, is obvious and clumsy. So when you go for the cross collar choke, and I know that the first hand's not the danger, the second hand is the danger, and I'm gonna try to stop it, or I know the arm bar, I'm gonna try the hitchhiker escape, or I'm gonna try to get my elbow in, or whatever it is you're doing, you know what's coming, and you know how to stop it, but you're so clumsy with the defense that your, your opponent, your training partner can, can get it anyway. Or they can see your defense coming and that sets them up for the next move. They call it human chess for a reason, people. If you defend in a clumsy and obvious way, there is a very good chance your training partner is setting you up for the next move or two or three moves, okay? So stage three is I recognize what you're doing and I know how to stop it, but my defense is obvious and clumsy, and you probably see my defense coming, and that's going to set up your next offensive move. Now, stage four is where I'm trying to be. Stage four is where I'm at right now and what I'm trying to do. So this is how this whole thing came about. I'll tell that story in a moment. Stage four, I recognize what you're going for, and I know how to do the escape. I know what to do. I know the defense, and my defense is covert. It's sneaky, and it's smooth. So you don't know how I'm going to defend it. You don't know exactly what I'm going to do to get out of the situation. But, and in doing so, in keeping it a secret, in keeping it covert, you are not able to predict or to plan the next two, three, or four moves ahead. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. If you are clumsy with your defense, if you're very dramatic, if you're very, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was working on grips a couple weeks ago, and my old you know, mindset was just rip the grip out, rip my arm out. And so they would see that coming, they get a grip. And when I went to exaggerate and pull my arm out, they would use that momentum against me and put me in something else. And so now when it comes to grips, my effort, stage four, is to not be so obvious in escaping the grip or getting out of the grip or reversing the grip or whatever it is, is to not be so clumsy and so obvious, but instead to be covert, to be sneaky, and to be smooth. That way they can't predict me or use my momentum against me or use my defense to set up their next move in offense. So when you get to this stage, you're doing something right and damn it, that's where I'm trying to get. And stage five is something I haven't even gotten a, even a whiff of yet, but that's the goal. Stage five is I set a trap for you to bait you into doing what I want you to do and going where I want you to go to set up my next move. Now that's some stuff that I'm not even there yet, okay? If I can get to stage five, I will feel like I've accomplished my objective. Stage five is like the holy grail for my white belt self right now. 
I set a trap. I leave this arm out here, right? Whatever it is, I set a trap and you fall into it and that sets up my move. That's the stage I'm trying to get to. So let's review. Stage one, I have no idea what you're doing. I'm just tapping. I'm lost and I'm going through the tumble cycle in the dryer and dang it, I'm just tapping like it's going out of style. Stage two is I recognize what you're doing, but I don't know how to stop it. Stage three would be I recognize what you're doing. I know how to stop it, but my defense is clumsy and obvious, and it's just setting you up for your next piece of offense. Stage four is I recognize what you're doing, and I know how to defend it, but my, my defense is covert and sneaky and smooth, so I'm not giving you anything for your next move. And stage five is, hey, I'm in charge. I'm setting the trap to bait you and to going for whatever I want you to go for, which sets up my next move, and that's where I'm trying to get. So I don't know if you agree with these stages. Let me know in the comments if, you, if this is how you've experienced rolling in jujitsu. Please shoot me a, a quick message down below. Hell yeah, same idea, or whatever you want to say. Just something that lets me know that I'm on the right track. This is how I've experienced it. This is how I have felt it. So if you felt the same, that'll make me feel a little better. However, if you had a different experience, if you think my stages are wrong, please, down in the comments on Instagram, hit me up and let me know, hey, Chris, your stages are dead wrong. This is what I really think the stages are because I'm open to changing my philosophy. Last week, rolling with Greg, I was trying to do something and he, he, he told me I was trying to get put weight on my elbows. This is a long story. I won't get into it, but I was trying to get to the point where I was putting weight on my elbows so that I could maintain my position. And he knew that's what I wanted to do because, damn it, he taught me how to do it. But the way I was going about it was super dramatic and super clunky and elbow down and elbow down. And he would use that momentum to roll me up into something else. And I said, man, why does this keep happening? He goes, because I know what you're going to do. You're telegraphing in boxing. We would call it telegraphing. You're telegraphing your punches. You're letting me know your escape before you do it. You're letting me know your intention before you do it. And I thought, well, damn it, isn't this the only way to escape? No, there are multiple ways to escape. But even if this is the only way you know how, you can still be smooth about it. You can still be covert. You can still be sneaky. You don't have to give me anything. You don't have to telegraph it. And so that made sense to me, and I thought I would share. If you agree, disagree, or have any kind of comments or feedback, hit me up in the comments or go to Instagram at Chris Learns Jiu Jitsu and send me a message. Please like and subscribe if you like these videos, and hopefully I will see you next time. Be safe, have fun, and kick some butt.